I'm Dave Westlake. I'm running for U.S. Senate. And I love having meetings like this in VFW halls. Because if you think about the men and women who gather here uh, on weekends to, to swap stories, and who knows how much of them are true or not, but uh, as a veteran, I've told a few of them myself. Uh, they gather here to talk to each other. They, they gather here to, to muster for parades. They gather here to, to assemble for funerals to send some of their own back to their maker. This is a pretty important place to be, and this is, I think, sets a really good setting for what this campaign is all about. This campaign is not about the traditional things that, that we've been running on as Republicans in the past because we know that doesn't work. It certainly doesn't work against Russ Feingold. We need to find a new, new path, a new, new course to, to go on. And I think that what it all, bo all boils down to this time in this election cycle is leadership. That's something that we're fundamentally missing, leadership and accountability in Washington. And if we're ever going to recover, if we're going to pull our country back from, from where it is right now to where it needs to be and get it back in the right track, it's going to take leadership. So I want to tell you a little bit about my time at West Point. Uh, about 20 years ago, you as taxpayers sent me there to learn about, and with the expectation to learn about duty, honor, and country, which is the motto of West Point. And your expectation was that I would take those three words and transform them from just three words in a motto to something that meant something, something that becomes part of me. You expect that of every graduate. So that when we go out into the Army, duty, honor, and country are at the forefront of everything we do. They're part of who we are. And you can't separate them from us any more than you can separate our own DNA. So duty, honor, and country became a part of me after walking the same hallways for four years as Douglas MacArthur walked. And eating in the same mess hall as Dwight David Eisenhower. Or walking <laughs> the same detention area as uh, George Patton. But when you, have, when you have giants like those guys to follow, people who have shaped the history of this world, set it on a new direction, liberated millions of souls, brought liberty to people who would not have liberty, it's a pretty incredible cadre of alumni you're with. So when I, when I graduated four, year, four years after, after doing those things, with duty, honor, and country being part of me, it stirred within me a, a spirit of service that you can't turn on or off. It's always on. And so when you see something happen to your country, like what's happening right now, you don't have a choice. And quite frankly, all of you who sent me to West Point should expect that it's not a choice for me to sit back and just watch Fox News and get angry. Times like this, People like me need to stand up and do the right thing. Part of the cadet prayers is my lifelong credo. It says, make me to choose the harder right over the easier wrong and never to be content with a half-truth when the whole can be won. If there's ever a time in our nation's history that that is more necessary, it's right now. So when I took the oath of office after graduating, it was about the same time that Senator Feingold took the oath of office in Washington. But it's kind of funny how in life, two people can experience the same thing and get something completely different out of it. For example, sometimes my wife and I will rent a movie. At the end of the movie, she'll be crying because it's so sweet and sappy. <laughs> I'll be crying because I'm in pain. It's <laughs> same type of concept with the oath of office. I took the oath of office, Senator Feingold took the oath of office. One of the first things he did when he got to Washington was he worked with his Democrat friends to try to make partial birth abortion legal. On the opposite side of that, I trained soldiers how to go to fight and win America's wars and come back alive. Senator Feingold worked with his Democrat party to cut defense spending. One of the first things I had the honor of doing was welcoming back soldiers from Mogadishu after the Black Hawk Down incident. It's the incident that went terribly wrong, you may remember, because we didn't have enough, enough uh, defense budget to send a tank into Mogadishu to protect American lives. Completely avoidable. Senator Feingold went to Washington after taking his oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States with his progressive agenda to grow the size of government and take away our liberties. I went after taking my oath of office to fight for our liberties. So if we're going to if we're going to transform this country back to what it's supposed to be, back to what it's supposed to be about, which is life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, then this election cannot be about 
the things that, that we, we hear camp, uh, candidates talk about all the time. I'm running because I, I'm worried about the future for my children. I'm worried about the future for what I want to do. No, that's not okay. This election cycle needs to be about service to God and to country and to each and every single one of you and to restoring the Tenth Amendment rights and to make sure that they're never threatened again to protect the Second Amendment rights that we all have. These things are sacred. They're not optional. If we're going to bring our country back to where it needs to go, then we need to remember that there are a few basic things that make this country great, and that is that we believe in the individuals and that each one of you makes a better decision for yourself and for your family than the government can. <laughs> that was a slow beginning, but I appreciate it. <laughs> And that the rights of the individuals can never be trampled on. And if we're going to truly make a difference in this election cycle, then we need to remember that America is great, and we can never, never apologize for that. Now, we're at an interesting time. And as conservatives, we recognize that these times are, are challenging. But these challenges are not necessarily a bad thing because we're still in one nation under God. And when you're in one nation under God and you're a conservative... You take away everything that we've been conditioned to think are, is important through our lives. And you remember that things that truly are important are life, our families, and our friends. As a conservative, when we're in tough times like this, and we, we just need to remember that this is still the land of the free and the home of the brave. And when you think about things through that prism, all this time does is build character for us. So when we emerge on the other side of this dark tunnel, we'll be better off than we were before. As conservatives, this is still Ronald Reagan's shining city on the hill. And all these times are. It's just the last few moments of darkness before the sun rises again and it's once again morning in America. I've got to be honest. I'm really looking forward to watching that sunrise with each and every single one of you. My name is Dave Westlake. Thank you very much. God bless you all. I want to be your next U.S. Senator.